Look, I like to go hiking in the mountains, but this is ridiculous. We talk about politics, we talk about having a political playing field, right? We use that metaphor because playing fields are flat, they're supposed to be. Why does it seem like when we as freedom-loving people participate in Washington state politics, that political playing field feels like we're climbing a mountain in the Cascades. That's not right. Something has gone wrong. What is it? On our Free Washington tour, which just concluded, we traveled around three teams of Freedom Foundation experts, six people in all, 33 stops, towns like Republic, Forks, Bellevue, Vancouver, all around Washington state to talk about this problem of undue influence in Washington state politics and government. And when we dig into it, when we really look at it here at the Freedom Foundation, we discover that there is a special interest group, a faction, as James Madison would have called them, that is public sector unions. And I, I want to walk through what this is, how to think about it, and what we can do about it. This is what we talked about on the tour, and I want to offer this to you. So public sector unions, we have to think about that broadly construed because there are people who work for the government, there are unions who claim to represent those employees, there are also a lot of unions that claim to represent people who in some way are being funded by government but they're contractors, maybe all or, or, or the lion's share of the work that they do is, is funded by government contract work. We have to follow the money and think about the public sector unions in, in, in broader terms than we sometimes do. And what's important to understand, first of all, is that unions and workers are not the same thing, right? They're not synonymous. Unions are distinct organizations, and in many cases they really are political organizations. That is the primary thing that they are doing uh, with their union funds and their, their other resources, right? And they're distinct from workers. How do we know that? Well, if you look at the last governor's election here in Washington state, you find that Voters in union households, that's how exit pollsters define the union vote, 46% voted for Rob McKenna, right? Almost perfectly split, very close to the same percentage in the overall population. But Jay Inslee got 99.7% of all the union money that went into the governor's race. Think about that. Almost half of the voters, the, the union vote, uh, was paying union dues, funding a candidate who they were going to vote against, right? That proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the unions are different from the workers they represent. The other thing to, re to remember is just how big an influence they have in our politics using these forced dues. There are hundreds of thousands of unionized workers in Washington state. Most of the unions, uh, most of the unionized workers actually are in the public sector. And those workers are divided on their politics, but unions, the, the union organizations themselves, the union bosses, march in lockstep in one direction. Why is that? It's because the interest of the unions is in growing their power. How do you grow your power if all of your funding comes from government? You do that by raising taxes, raising government spending, even increasing regulation and just government power, right? Because all of that means that government will need more people and the unions feed off of employee salaries and in some cases off of subsidies paid to people by government to do things like care for poor children or care for disabled people, right? The unions feed off of that. They get a cut of those, mon those monies. They invest them in politics. So how does this cycle work? Well, government has given power to the unions. Uh, you know, government fights against monopolies in the private sector, but government actually creates monopolies, empowers monopolies with the unions, allows them to force workers to pay union dues. The unions take that money and invest it in politics to elect people into government with whom the union bosses then go and negotiate. And the focus of the negotiations is to increase union power. Uh, that's done in a variety of different ways. But at the end of the day, what's important to understand is it means higher taxes, and it means, in many cases, less government services, right? In, in education, you can see this. The union interest is in the unions and then in a, the adults. It's not in the kids, right? That's the union's job. We shouldn't be surprised by that, but that's how it works. 
And, and this cycle then, if they're successful, means that the unions have more power, more money to invest in more politics, to produce more big government politicians with whom they negotiate, and the cycle just goes on and on and on, producing this undue influence that we see in our political system. Whatever you care about, if you care about freedom, this is a big problem. How big? Well, in the governor's race, 2012, $6.8 million were spent to elect the big government candidate, right? And, and don't ask me who the big government candidate was. Ask the unions. They invested the money, and they were very clear that they, they viewed Jay Inslee as being someone who would advance their agenda. But of that $6.8 million, another interesting fact from Freedom Foundation research and analysis, Four and a half million of those dollars were spent, were earmarked on negative political campaigning, right? They were spent explicitly and intentionally on political attacks, right? That's how big this problem is. That's where a lot of the nastiness comes in our politics, is from these union organizations that are accountable to no one, not the candidates, not even the people who pay their, their bills. Uh, for their political spending. And that's what we see, undue influence. What can we do about it? At the Freedom Foundation, we recognize that solving the problem of undue influence, solving a lot of our problems here in Washington State, really means that we have to wake people up. We actually have to change what people believe about politics and government. Is that a big task? Yes. It's an absolutely big task to change the political culture and direction of Washington State. But we're up to the challenge, and I bet you are too. The first thing we have to do is find and tell stories. People learn through stories. People wake up to problems through stories. I bet that why you care so much, care enough to watch this video, is partly because you have stories in your life that convinced you that these things matter. I know that's true for me. I have stories in my life that made me interested in how government works and how I could have an impact through politics. It's the stories that get people interested in the facts and in what they can do to change things. We have to find and tell stories. You can find on the Freedom Foundation's YouTube channel lots of stories, our Tales of Tyranny series. Next year, we have to expand this to tell the stories of people hurt by unions and their undue influence. There are workers forced to pay dues, people forced to support politics that they have strong disagreement with. Right? There are people who are, are forced to go through all kind of bureaucracy just to get back a small share of their political, uh, the political part of their union dues, uh, and unions that have no requirement to actually be honest about how much they spend on politics. These are the kind of stories we need to tell. If you know about stories, contact us at the Freedom Foundation. Help us tell the stories, or maybe even better, Find and tell these stories yourself. With today's technology, we are all the media. We can all do this, and we can change the political culture and direction of Washington State. The other thing we have to do is get those stories out, and you can be instrumental in that, taking this content, uh, spreading it to your friends on Facebook, on email. Uh, we have print publications at the Freedom Foundation trying to educate people about the magnitude of this problem and the fact that there are solutions. There are things that we can do. Now, what can we do on the policy side? Some of the solutions are just simple. Some of them look like transparency requirements for unions. Let's let union members know how their money's being spent. That's pretty simple. Who could disagree with that? <laughs> I think we'll find out who. Uh, other things, obviously, all the way to right to work laws. People are talking about that now in the Washington State Legislature. It's happened in Michigan. It's happened in Wisconsin. I think we're going to see it happen in some other states. I think we're going to see these kind of reforms happen right here in Washington State. If we all pull together, if we understand the problem of, of undue influence, if we tell the stories, if we really try to persuade the people around us, we can change our state. At the Freedom Foundation, our mission is to advance individual liberty, free enterprise, and limited accountable government. If we want to do that in Washington, we actually have to change the political culture and direction of our state. Not little tweaks, not nibbling around the edges, right? This is big change we're talking about. We can do it. I hope you'll connect with us at the Freedom Foundation. If you weren't at our Free Washington Tour this last week, I hope you'll be at the Free Washington Tour next March 2014. Thank you so much.